Hello and welcome back. I'm Adam with Push the Envelope, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. Today we're going to be going over another machine learning model, and that is the adaptive boosting algorithm or the Adaboost algorithm. So the Adaboost algorithm is going to look very similar to the random forest algorithm as far as having a whole bunch of weak learners that contribute to the output. The difference is the random forest algorithm is a bagging algorithm where they all vote for a final solution. And the Adaboost model, per its name, is a boosting model. So it's going to use what it learns from previous classifiers in order to come up with some weighted sum of all of the answers. So let's get started with introducing what Adaboost is and how we can use it. Okay, let's start off talking about Adaboost by discussing some of the building blocks of the Adaboost algorithm. The first being decision trees. Now, if you aren't familiar with decision trees, you never used them before or understand what they are, I do have a tutorial that goes over decision trees specifically. It's fairly short, so I definitely suggest checking that out before you watch this video. But as a high level, we are taking features and we are mapping them down to classes using some conditions. And it comes up with a chart that looks like this, where you have features on the top and they're slowly being mapped down to your output classes. Now, if you remember from the random forest video, we did something called bagging, where we took a whole bunch of these decision trees and made them into really weak learners. But the final output was the majority vote of all these weak learners. Adaboost does something different, which is called boosting per its name. Uh, but it's going to sort of take this structure. So let's get into it by looking at Adaboost. So Adaboost is going to start with the original data. And that original data is going to be fed into a weak learner, so a dis very weak decision tree. And in fact, the decision tree that you see right here, where it's one node into two outputs, is called a stump. And that's what we're going to be doing. These very simple uh, decision trees that take one feature and split the outputs into two classes. And so the output of this decision tree, or this stump right here, is going to give us some classes that were predicted accurately and some that were not. And here is the step that is going to be different between boosting and bagging. Instead of continuing on with this as our final prediction and then doing a voting system, we're actually going to pass a signal that says, here's all of the values that the first model got wrong. And we're going to come up with a weighted data set. So we're going to fine tune the original data set to weight the classes that the first model got wrong more heavily than the ones that it got right. So this second model is going to try to fix all of the mistakes that the first model made while preserving all of the ones that it got right. And so this data set, like before, is going to be fed into another decision tree or another stump. And we're just going to continue this process on where it gives us the second model gives us classes that were predicted accurately in classes that weren't. And we're going to try to preserve all the ones that were predicted accurately in the next model while fixing all the mistakes. And we just continuously do this for however many models that we want to make within the Adaboost algorithm. And there's parameters to set the number of estimators. And we'll get into that when we start actually using it. But in a nutshell, this is how the Adaboost algorithm works. Now, once we have all of these models trained up, what we do is we come up with a equation for a weighted sum. So obviously some of these algorithms are going to be better at splitting the data and predicting the data than others. So we want to weight those algorithms more heavily than some of the other ones. So we're going to have a weight per each of these outputs in order to come up with some final result that gives us the end class that we're looking for. Now. That is all Adaboost is, and that's what boosting is. There are a lot of things that you can do, like adjust the learning rates and change the number of classifiers. We're not going to get into that in this video, but we will be using this in the Titanic data set. So go ahead and check that video out if you want to see this in action. And we'll be able to start fine tuning some hyperparameters and building out these algorithms. But for this video, this is all. Just wanted to give a gentle introduction of what Adaboost is. And with that, I will see you in the next video.